Well, bless the Lord. I so look forward to our time together on Wednesday nights. I tell you, I enjoy fellowshipping with you in the word of God. God has given me an awesome teaching for you when you come and meet me right here. I am prepared. I tell you, and I've got some cues for you tonight. Q-U-E-S. What are they? If you want to be blessed, do these things. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to be blessed, do these things. Now get your pen, your paper, your tablets, your devices. Get whatever it is that you take notes in because you need to take notes on this. I tell you, I've been giving you the, the word of God that God has given me for you in this hour. And Satan wants you to get all wrapped up in failure, in chaos, and in the terribleness of the times and the loss. Ain't about nothing. If you want to be blessed, just do these things that I'm going to give you tonight. And blessed you shall be. Ah, get your Bibles now and let's turn to Psalms. Chapter 1, verses 1, 2, and 3. All right? Let's read. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel, read with me, of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Now that holds no gender. You might say, oh, she's saying he, he, he holds no gender there. When God speaks to man, mm-hmm, M-A-N, that's what he made. Genesis 1, 26 through 28. You see, male, female, made he them. All right. So this um, tells, it tells you how to be blessed every day of your life. Oh, every day. Okay, it also reveals what will prevent you from being blessed. All right, right here. And obviously, if you practice the what to do's in this psalm, then you can expect the results that it promises. Now, on the other hand, if you practice the do not, then you allow the devil to block your blessings. Okay. So the do nots. What are the do nots? Let's be very clear here. Very simple, but clear. Number one, walk not in the counsel of the godly. So the do nots is do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. Okay? Mm -hmm. Do not stand in the way of sinners. Do not sit in the seat of the scornful. Do not. And the do's are, delight yourself in the Lord. The do's are, meditate in it day and night. Huh. What are the results? The results right here in this verse. Blessed, fruitful, prosperous. Come on, say it with me. Blessed, fruitful, prosperous. Those are the results of doing the do's. Delighting yourself in the Lord, meditating in, in him day and night. The word, the law, the word. It's really not that hard. What does it boil down to? A matter of choice. Mm. I tell you, the do nots will cause you to regress and not progress. Okay? I don't want to do the do nots. I don't want to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. I don't want to sit in the seat of the scornful. I don't want to stand in the way of sinners. I don't want to be around that. I, just get me out of that drama. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And the reason you have a choice is because if you do if if you if you end up doing the do nots, you're gonna put yourself in a compromising position. You don't want to do that. That's what the do not think. See, it, 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 it represents you being in a compromising position when you do the do nots. See, you have a choice to listen. You got a choice to obey God. 
you have a choice to do this thing and doing it God's way, doing things, doing, doing God's way of doing things. Let's say it like that. God's way of doing things or the world's way of doing things. And so what? You always choose God's way. That's the bottom line. You don't choose the world's way. You choose God's way every time. Okay, this is simple. And the psalmist is telling us right here, to be blessed, to be fruitful, to be prosperous, we must do it God's way. Mm -hmm. It must be the priority in your life. Make it a priority. You know, if you if you do the other way, you're going to put yourself in a compromising position. Choose the do's and not the do nots. Don't put yourself in a compromising position. Don't compromise the word. And don't compromise your convictions. You know you get that tug when you do the do nots. Yeah. Don't, uh, don't compromise your com convictions. Don't do it. Satan knows if you're willing to compromise, then that gives him the foothold that he's looking for in your life. Let him do it. That's why Paul tells us in Ephesians 4. And 27, neither give place to the devil. Okay? The Amplifier says, leave no room or foothold for the devil. Give no opportunity to him. Isn't that good? Glory to God. Because if Satan don't have a foothold, then he has he doesn't have a right to stop you from being blessed. None. He has no right. Can't do it. So say. He hopes that you will choose the way that seems right instead of the way that is right. He hopes that. He hopes that you will choose the way that seems right instead of the way that is right. Yeah, it's a difference. Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. It won't turn out right. It just will not work out. It won't take you into a place of being blessed, fruitful, and prosperous. Okay? This is what the psalmist is saying. He said, don't you sit in that seat of the scoffle because they always oppose the way of the Lord. They despise and disrespect the word of God. That's the seat of the scoffle. Mm -mm. I leave them alone. And Paul tells us in his writing, in Galatians, it says they mock God. That's what he said. Or in other words, they don't believe what he says. They deny the validity of the word of God. Huh. If you agree, you start agreeing with them. You're going to rob yourself of a blessed lifestyle. Amen. Hey, glory. <laughs> You're going to rob yourself of a blessed lifestyle. Learn to delight yourself in the word of God. Choose to agree with the word, not against it. Choose to do that. In other words, if you determine that it's going to be first place and it's going to have final authority in your life, then look out. Watch the fruit. Watch the blessings. Watch the prosperity come in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you do that and you continue to make it a routine in your life, you will get to the place, let me tell you right now, you just can't get enough of God's word. You'll be delighting yourself in it every day. Amen. That's what happens when you begin to choose making right choices. Oh, great things happen. Oh, glory to God. You start getting involved with reading the word of God, literally, literally. And, and then you'll start pondering on that word of God, literally. You know what that means? You start chewing on it. <laughs> oh, yes, getting it all down on the inside. Get everything out of that word. That's what happened. Glory to God. You find yourself reading a, a particular scripture, and then you begin to ponder on how that verse uh, works in your circumstances. Absolutely, that's the way it goes. And you begin to get a revelation concerning that word. You got the information. You got inspired. You get a revelation. Well, if you begin to choose to apply it daily in your life, you make that uh -huh, a habitual 
part of what you do every day, routinely reading the word and applying it, making it first place in your life, you're going to find yourself being fruitful. You're going to find yourself being blessed and you're going to find yourself being prosperous. Oh, yes, it will happen in your life. Glory to God, because the more you think about it, the more confident you'll become that I am blessed. I am fruitful. I am prosperous. Amen. The more you get in that word, it works down on the inside. Glory to God. And you begin to see yourself as God's word says you are. Oh, glory to God. And suddenly, you become convinced that it will come to pass in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> and when that happens, you know that's going to bring joy. When that happens, that's going to motivate you to want to spend more time in God's word. Because it'd be just so good. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And the psalmist says that you will eventually prosper in whatever you do. Uh, because why? You're applying it across the board. This is what you routinely do. This is your habitual culture. Ooh, God is good. So once again, the choice is yours. <laughs> bottom line is this. It's a matter of discipline. That's the bottom line. Making it a routine. Making it a daily choice. Making it routine in your life. You got to do it, people of God. And you begin to set this up as routine. It becomes a habit. Oh, but let me tell you, you're on your way to changing your character and changing your destiny. Oh, hallelujah. And it takes real discipline to make the word of God first place in your life. It, it does. It takes discipline. But oh, is it worth it all? It is so worth every bit of it. So I'll ask you, how desperate do you want to be blessed? Hmm. i tell you one thing. If, you, if, if so, then this word that I'm giving you tonight, you see, uh, oh, if you want to be blessed, do these things. How, how desperate do you want to be blessed? Hmm. You'd be so motivated you start working this discipline in your life and get your habitual culture of reading God's word uh -huh. every day, applying it in your life every day, making choices to do what his word says every day. Mm -hmm. Making sure being disciplined to not get over into compromising positions of the do nots. Oh, you're getting ready to be blessed. You're getting ready to show up, be fruitful, and you will definitely be prosperous. Without a doubt. Glory to God. You get so motivated mm -hmm. that wh whatever you have to do, whatever you have to do, however you got to do it, you'll, you'll use that kind of discipline in your life until it becomes a part of you. That this is the way you live your life. This is the wisdom that you move in to the do's and the do nots. And you don't have to have your list anymore. Why? Because you put it in your heart. It, it's a part of your habitual culture. That's the way you handle your life. And you end up, uh -huh, I'm walking in blessings. I'm walking in fruitfulness. I'm walking in prosperity. Ha! Hey! Glory to God. Don't you forget that. Glory to God. Because when you do that and you begin to practice that and you get the word of God down on the inside of you and move it, you can't do it by yourself. That's the Holy Spirit that helps you because you are willing to make the choice. Holy Spirit will help you. He'll get in there. Remember, one of his names is Helper. He'll, he'll help you in those tough times, those difficult times. It means that he's going to work with you and he will assist you. The Holy Spirit will do that. That's why we have him down on the inside of us. Oh, he gives us wisdom what to do. He instructs us. He leads us and he guides us. The prophet Isaiah said that, that you'll hear a voice behind you saying, you know, when you want to go left or right, you'll hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way. Go this way. <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. That's your helper. Helping you. Assisting you mm -hmm, to do so that you can what? Be blessed. So that you can what? Be prosperous. So that you can what? Oh, my goodness. Be fruitful. In this life, don't you forget, the one of the Holy Spirit's name is Helper. God is so good. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank God for the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for what God has planned for him to do. All that he's got to do for you and for me in this hour. Mm -hmm. That's why the enemy doesn't want you to get that dot. That you need God, you need Jesus, and you need the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. So you choose today. You choose today. To put the word first place in your life. You choose today 
to delight yourself in the word of God and watch what will happen. Just watch what will happen in your life today. Do it today. Watch what will happen. Now, when I know Wednesday night Bible study, okay, start right now and do it tomorrow. 24 hour span. I challenge you. Glory to God. Delight yourself in it. See what will happen. Your life will become better and better. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. And you will truly begin to understand the meaning of bless. If you want to be blessed, then do these things. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, do not compromise the word of God in you. Do these things. Ooh, be blessed. Ooh, be fruitful. Ooh, be prosperous every day of your life. Ah, now you get that down. You chew on that right there. I tell you, I challenge you. Come on, give God glory. Come on, give him the praise. We have truly enjoyed this timing together because I'm telling you, that right there, woo, life changing. God is so good. He's worthy to be praised. It's offering time. It is time for us to give. It is time for us to obey God. Choose to obey him. Oh, yes. And that that he would have you to do on this evening. Let us obey God. Let us release what God would have to be released in this hour and walk away in the blessings of God as never before. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. It's on the bottom of the screen. And I am sure that you're moving in obedience right now to obey God. This is good ground. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, where you can see the choices of God are being made and where we see the blessings where we see the prosperity, where we see the fruitfulness of God. Oh, yes. Yeah, so why not plant? Oh, 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 glory to God. It's good ground. It'll help you to get that habitual culture that you will begin to routinely, oh, make the word of God first place in your life. The do's. Don't get into the do nots. Be blessed. Be fruitful. Be prosperous. In the name of God. Jesus. God bless you.